gentlemen. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was Friday, August 6th. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch on a homicide division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Lorman. My name's Friday. A nine-year-old boy had been missing from his home for five hours. An entire division had been alerted. Because of the possibility of foul play, we came out from homicide to assist in the search. He'd been found at 12.42 a.m. and had been taken home. It was time to check out. Hi. You talked to Hartgrove? Yeah, I came in with him. How'd you do? Well, we located the boy. Where'd you find him? Been over at his boyfriend's. They watched TV until about 9.30. Missing youngster told his friend that his mother knew he was there. Uh-huh. Kid left the house. He was afraid to go home. Played around for a while. Motorcycle officer finally picked him up and brought him in. We took him home. As soon as I finish up here, we'll go home. Yeah. Everything's all right, huh? Yeah, I guess so. I'll bet that kid'll eat standing up for a few days. I got it. Homicide, Friday. Yes, sir. What time was that? Yeah. Well, did you check there? You're sure? I see. Well, you want to give me that address again? Yes, sir. All right, I have it. No, sir, we'll be right out. Right. Well, we got one. Yeah? Guy out on Normandy. Says his wife was supposed to meet him a half hour ago. She hasn't shown up yet. He called his house? Yeah, she's not there either. Says she's never done this sort of thing before. Well, it's always the first time. No, not the way he puts it. Yeah? He thinks she's been kidnapped. <laughs> Frank and I left the office and drove over to the place. It was a beer garden located on Normandy Avenue. If the story we'd gotten on the phone was true and the woman had been kidnapped, the place might be watched. We parked the car down the street and walked back to the place one at a time. I'm George Cabot. Sure didn't waste any time getting here. All right, sir. Want to tell us what happened? My wife's gone. What do you mean? Ethel's disappeared. Well, when did you see her last? This morning when I left the house. Have you talked to her since? Yeah, 12.55 tonight. She called here to tell me she was on her way down. I see. Did she seem all right then? Yeah, as far as I could tell. Possible she might have stopped at one of the neighbors. I thought about that, too, but I checked. Nobody's seen her. You've called your home, have you? Yeah, didn't get any answer. I tell you, something's happened, Ethel. I'm about to blow my cork not knowing what it is. Maybe she's still at the house and didn't hear the phone ring. I figured that, too. Maybe that's her. Ethel? What? No, this is Cabot's beer garden. Yes, ma'am. Who? No, I didn't see him tonight. No, I'm sure. Yeah, I'd know him. No, lady, I'm not lying for him. He isn't here. Yeah, if I see him, I will. Yeah. Good night. Wasn't her. Mm -hmm. Woman's in the same fix I'm in, only she can't find her husband. Mr. Cabot. Yes, sir? Hope you won't be offended by this, but does your wife drink? You mean you think she stopped at some bar and got gassed up and just didn't show up? Is that what you mean? No, sir, that's not what I mean. I just asked if your wife drank. You got it all wrong. Ethel has a martini once in a while before dinner, but that's it. All right, sir, it's a question we've got to ask. I hope you understand. Just as long as you don't think Ethel's a lush, because she isn't. You said you checked your house. Yeah, when she didn't show up, I waited a while. Then I got worried and called Mrs. Lawrence. She's the lady next door. I see. Ask her if she'd seen Ethel. Yeah. She said my wife had been over there all evening. They were playing that baseball game, line drive. You know, with the cards. I don't think I know it. A new game. Anyway, they played it for a while and then watched television. At 12.30, Ethel said she had to come down and meet me. Mrs. Lawrence said she left the house and drove away. I see. This neighbor's kind of bubble-headed, you know. She's not real bright about things, so I thought maybe Ethel had gotten sick and couldn't answer the phone when I called. Yeah. I got a cab and went home. Car was gone. So was Ethel. Checked the whole house and yard. Not a sign of her. Looked in the front closet, too. Her coat was gone. I'm sure she left the house. Yes, sir. I had the cab driver come back to the bar the same way Ethel always drives it. Thought that maybe there was an accident or something. If there was, I'd be able to see it. You know, people or cops or something. Yes, sir, we understand. Wasn't anything. She was just gone. Does she always come down here at night? Regular clockwork. Never misses. Excuse me. Hello? Yeah. No, I remember. No, ma'am, I haven't seen him. Look, lady, I've got my own troubles. I'm not trying to cover up for your husband. It doesn't make any difference to me or not what you think. He isn't here. Okay, that's fine with me. 
He never ran up more than a 30 cent tab anyway. Even then he ate all the peanuts on the bar. You tell him I said so. Yeah. Good night. Real crackpot. Yes, sir. Now, you were saying that your wife made it a practice to come down here. That's right. You see, our boy was killed five years ago. Only kid. We took it pretty hard. Got on Ethel's nerves sitting around the house by herself, so she'd drive down to pick me up. Get here a little early and help me with the cleanup. Yes, sir. Call at 12.55 to say she was leaving. Walk in the door at 105. Didn't vary more than a minute either way. Depend on the light at the corner of Denmore and Santa Monica. If she makes it green, it's 104 when she walks in. Otherwise, she's a minute later. Does she always call before she leaves the house? I can walk over to the phone at 5 of 1 and pick it up. I know she's going to be on the other end. Has your wife been in good mental spirits lately? How do you mean? Well, has there been something on her mind? Anything that worried her a little more than usual, maybe? No, she didn't say anything. If there was, I'd have been able to tell. Is there any special reason why you think she's been kidnapped? Just that she's gone. She doesn't like Ethel to do something like this. I know it's not her idea. Then she's never done anything like this before, then? No. Mm -hmm. Do you have a picture of her we could have? Sure, I got one in my wallet. Probably that woman. Hello, look, I haven't seen... What? Now, look, don't try that with me. No, I don't. If you hurt her, I'll make you sorry for the rest of your life. Hello. Hello. Cabot. Cabot. What? What's the matter? Nothing. I guess I made a mistake about the whole thing. What do you mean? I guess nothing happened, Ethel. Just forget I called you about it. That the way you want it? Yeah. Sorry to cause you all the trouble. Like to buy you a beer if I can. No, thanks. Sorry about the whole thing. You want to tell us what they said? Who? Party on the phone. I don't want to talk about anything. You're not going to help your wife that way. Now, what they ask for? Look, I told you guys it was all a mistake. Now, why not let it go at that? How about the picture you were going to give us? <laughs> no reason for it. The whole thing's a goof up. Well, you talked on the phone didn't make it sound that way. All right. She's gone. These are the people who have her. They asked for money? No. They said to me to sit tight and not tell anybody or they'd kill Ethel. I'm going to do it like they say. You know, you're taking a lot of responsibility on yourself, Cabot. Maybe so. But she's my wife. This is a big city. It's going to be a little tough to find the kidnappers without your help. Not so bad. How do you mean that? I got an idea of who they are. It isn't going to be too hard to find out. You go out on a limb and you're liable to give your wife a lot more trouble than help. Ethel's my wife. You're not going to let us help you then, huh? No. And I don't want to go over it again. I got the only stake in it anyway. No, you're wrong about that. Hmm? How about your wife? Because of his attitude, it was useless to try and question George Cabot any further. We left the beer garden and made arrangements for a complete 24-hour surveillance to be kept on him. In most cases of this type, the kidnappers usually demand that the victim's friends or relatives stay away from the law enforcement agencies. They do this to stall for time. Statistics prove that in the vast majority of cases, the victim's fate was decided long before the kidnapping occurred. It is not the intent of any officer to endanger the life of a kidnapped victim, but at the same time, it is necessary for them to have all available information so that they can move rapidly when the case does break. In an effort to gain more information on the missing woman, Frank and I went over to see the victim's next door neighbor. She identified herself as Carol Lawrence. Not sure this is quite proper, you know. What's that, Ms. Lawrence? A couple of men in my house at this hour. Especially with me in my bathrobe. Well, I'm sure the neighbors will understand. I hope so. A couple of real gabby ones on the street, you know. Uh-huh. Big mouths. Yes, ma'am. Guess you'll be in policeman, it's all right, do you think? Yes, ma'am. Okay, then what do you want to know? When did you see Ms. Cabot last? You mean Ethel? That's right. Saw tonight, why? What time she leave? Guess it was about 12.30. Did she say where she was going? Didn't have to. How do you mean? Ethel only goes one place that time of night. I see. Down to pick up George. We understand she usually calls him before she leaves. That's right. Left here at 12.30. Went next door to get a coat. A couple of minutes later, I heard her drive off. What can you tell us about her? Nice woman. Real nice. Yes, ma'am. We're great chums, you know. Belong to the same club. See a lot of each other. Uh-huh. You see, my husband's gone, and Ethel's man works every night, so she's alone a lot of the time, too. Yeah. Ever since their boy was killed, she's been kind of empty. I see. And two George don't help much. What do you mean, Miss Lawrence? Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. No, it's all right, ma'am. I sure don't want to get nobody in trouble. You won't? You want to nose it around that I told you anything. No. How about you? No, ma'am. One thing I can't go is a person who carries tails. Just can't go them. Don't want anybody to say that about me. What were you going to say? Yeah, guess it'll be all right, just the honest looking. Thank you. He is, too. Yes, ma'am. All right, what is it, Ms. Lawrence? Well, 
You know, poor Ethel isn't very happy. Is that so? Oh, my, yes. I feel so sorry for her sometimes. What about? It's that husband of hers. Mr. Cabot? Yeah. Oh, he's a good provider and all, but I always say there's more to life than just that. Yes, ma'am. Nice home, good car, bills all paid, but George isn't the fellow he makes out, you know. Ma'am? Why do you think Ethel goes down to that bar to pick him up every night? Well, why don't you tell him? You know, men, you should be able to figure it out. She doesn't trust him, that's why. Uh-huh. All those girls hanging around the beer garden, Ethel notices things like that. George has got pretty big eyes, too. Doesn't take a lot of imagination to add it all up. Has Mrs. Cabot ever talked to you about all this? A couple of times. She'd come over crying because of something George had said or done. She'd tell me. Mm-hmm. No, sir, no matter what it looked like, they weren't very happy. Did they ever quarrel that you know of? A lot of times. George used to yell at her, scream about her, leaving him alone. I could hear it over here. Summertime, you know, the windows are open. Sound carries right over. Uh-huh. Couldn't really not hear it. And mind, I didn't try. Yes, ma'am. Any of these quarrels ever get violent, would you know? You mean did George ever hit her? That's right. You bet he did. Gave her a black eye once. It took a couple of weeks for it to go away. Poor Ethel tried to hide it with makeup, but you could still tell. When she left, did she say that she was going down to pick up her husband? Yeah. Told me she had to get George. Made her a little mad tonight. Why is that? Missed the last part of the movie on TV. Ethel had to leave before we found out who the swindler was. Uh-huh. Can you tell us what kind of a car the cabots drive? Ford. Coupe or sedan? Sedan, light blue. What year? This one, brand new. Do you happen to know the license number? No, I couldn't give that to you. Didn't pay a lot of attention. Do you happen to know if they do business with one service station? No, I can't tell you that. I don't pry into their personal life. Yeah. Can you give us a description of Mrs. Cabot? Sure, I'll give you a picture if you want one. Yes, ma'am, we'd appreciate that. No trouble at all. Thank you. Um, I've got a scrapbook here someplace. Huh. Well, I paid that bill. Uh oh. That dented fender. I didn't think it cost that much. High school autograph album. Oh, for heaven's sake, I wondered where that was. Huh. Albert's. No, it isn't here. Wait a minute. I know where it is. Put my hand right on it. Tissue paper. I wanted some tissue paper last week. Couldn't find any. Yeah. Candy corn Pomona Fair. Last year. Yeah. <clears throat> I was trying to... My novel. I'll get at that again. I took all these myself. Yes, ma'am. They're very nice. That's me. I thought you said you took all these pictures yourself. Self-portrait. Yes, ma'am. Took these near the Catalina oh. Isthmus. Albacore fishing. Mm-hmm. Oh, say. Here's that recipe for frosted gingerbread men I was looking for last Christmas. I have to remember where I put that. Here's one you can take. This one here in the chef's hat's Ethel. We were having a barbecue. She was a cook. A little fuzzy, but gives you an idea of what she looks like, see? Yes, ma'am. Hair's short now. Had it cut last month. Kind of bob-like. You can take it. Well, thank you very much. You know, just thought of it. You haven't told me what this is all about. Something happened to Ethel and George? We're not sure yet. We're just checking out a complaint. Oh. As long as they're all right. Yes, ma'am. Well, I think that about covers it. I'd like to thank you for your cooperation. Happy to help. Say, I just happened to think about something. What's that, ma'am? I've got a better picture of Ethel. Carry it in my wallet. One she had taken. If you like, I'll get it. Well, it's not too much trouble. Not at all. Got short hair in it. All right, ma'am. Thank you. Be right back. Piece of gum. What do you think? I don't know. The way she tells it, something's sure out of line, isn't it? Yeah. Cabot seemed to be pretty upset, though, when he got that call. Well, there's one thing wrong with that. What do you mean? Maybe that's what he wanted us to think. <laughs>
2.56 a.m., Frank and I got back to the office. We ran the names George and Ethel Cabot through R&I, but we found no record on them. We contacted DMV and asked for all available information on any car registered to George Cabot or his wife or both. Frank called the business office to see if the men in the units who were keeping Cabot under surveillance had reported in. There were no messages. We told them we'd be at home if anything developed. We made a 15.7 report directing it to Captain Warman, telling him what had happened and what action we'd taken. At 3.52 a.m., we were ready to leave the office. All set? Yeah. All right, let's go. Homicide, Friday. You did, I went. Where? Right. What do you got? Ethel Cabot. Yeah. They just found her. the office immediately and drove over to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital. When we got there, we talked with Dr. Sebastian and he gave us the whole story. The woman had been found lying by the roadside and was picked up by a motorist. He'd taken her directly to the hospital. Dr. Sebastian went on to tell us that a tentative identification had been made through a letter found on her person when she'd been brought in. An attempt had been made to call her husband, but there was no answer at either the beer garden or at their home. The doctor went on to say that Ethel Cabot had been severely beaten and then rolled or dragged in hot tar. Her clothes were covered with it, and her hair was matted. The doctor said that the woman's head had been shaved and that most of the tar had been removed. Frank and I waited until the woman had been treated. She was in a state of shock and incoherent. Don't hit me anymore. Please, don't hit me anymore. Pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't do anything. Don't hit me. Miss Cabot. <laughs> Miss Cabot. Let me go. Please, let me go. You're all right now, Miss Cabot. There's nothing to be afraid of. You're lying. We're not lying, Miss Cabot. You're in a hospital. You're all right now. Don't let him get me anymore. Don't let him touch me. Nobody's going to hurt you anymore. Where's George? They're trying to reach him. I don't want to see him. Not ever. All his fault. George caused this? They told me. Who told you? Both of them. They said they were doing it for George. There were two people? Yes. They kept hitting me, and then they poured the tar over me. Wasn't anything I could do. Nothing. Did you know the men? They kept hitting me. George! George, tell them to stop. Not anymore. Please, not anymore. Mrs. Oh, Cabot, do you know who the two men were? I don't know them. They didn't have any reason to do it. They said for George. That's what they told me. I didn't know they were going to hit me like that. Did you hear a name? No. I don't know them. Did you hear either one of them call a name of any kind? Please, make them stop. Don't let them pour any more tar on me. Burns, I can't stand anymore. Please. Mrs. Cabot, anymore. can you tell us what the men looked like? George, George, tell them to stop. Tell them. Miss Cabot. George, make him stop. Miss Cabot. <laughs> We're not going to get much more out of her. No, we better get a policewoman up here to stand by, huh? Yeah. <laughs> George! George! Ellen! George! Joel. Yeah, Dave. Call just came through from a business office. They want you to get in touch with them. Said it was important. Right, thank you. Probably got a line on Cabot, huh? Yeah. This Friday. When? really tears it. What's that? They lost the tail on Cabot. We went back to the office. We talked with the men in the unit who'd been assigned to keep Cabot under surveillance. They told us he'd gone downtown and entered an all-night movie. In the darkness, he managed to get away. Two teams of men were sent out to cover his house and the beer garden. 
A local broadcast was sent out to all units asking that they be on the lookout for George Cabot. If he was found, he was to be taken into custody and we were to be notified immediately. We shaved and changed our clothes. I'm looking for Friday and Smith. Yeah, that's us. Okay if I come in? Sure. I'm on the left. I got something to tell you. Yeah. You heard from Cabot? No, we haven't. Figured maybe he'd call you. You know him? Yeah. I work for him. Help him out in the place. Have you heard from him? Yeah. This morning. He called me. Did you say where he was? No. I, I think he'd been drinking. Sounded like it. Yeah. Either that or he was mad, one or the other. Is that right? Yeah. Last time I heard him talk like he did this morning was when he had a beef. About a week ago. What was that all about? A couple of guys coming to be a garden, thought they were pretty tough, tried to prove it to George. Yeah. <laughs> Clean up the place with him. What caused the beef? They started to get loud with a couple of girls in the place. George told them to quiet down. They didn't do it, so he told them to get out. Yeah. They didn't want to go, so they tried to put the muscle on George. They tried it with the wrong guy. George really showed him. Is that right? Yeah. Bought some boat right out into the street. Guys were pretty sore about it. When did all this happen? About a week ago. I don't remember the exact date. Uh-huh. They were pretty sore. Told George they'd find some way to get even with him. Do you know these two men? Yeah, I've seen them a couple of times around a beer garden. You know their names? One of them is called Jack Some. I don't know the last part. How about the other one? Can't do you any good there. You know where we can find them? Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I came here. I want to tell you what George said to me. All right, what did he say? He said he'd find out who kidnapped that one. Told me how he was going to get him. Mentioned Jack. Figured it's the same guy. Where can we find him? Hotel over in 7. I can show you. Okay, let's go. All right. There's something else, though. What's that? I was at the beer garden when George called. After I talked to him, I checked around. Uh-huh. His gun's gone. Got a match? the office and drove over to 7th Street. We checked with a day clerk and found that two men answering the description shared a room in the basement. While Arnold Leffer waited in the car, we went down to the room. Should be the last one down there. Yeah. wonder if Cabot's got it. He has. Come on. Watch it. All right, Cabot, that's enough. Oh. Get him away. All right, I don't want to kill him. Take it Come easy. on, please don't Come stop on, me. Settle down. He's crazy. The guy's crazy. All right, that's enough. All right, All right. Now you stand still. All right, take it easy, Cabot. Turn around. Turn around. Cabot, what are you trying to prove doing a thing like this? A couple of minutes, one, I wouldn't have cared. We found your wife. She's going to be all right. Yeah, I know. You didn't help yourself much doing this, you know. He's crazy. You shut up. You going to calm down, or do we put the handcuffs on you, too? All right. Well, what about this one? Name's Rico Martin. Him and Jack took my wife. All right, I told you that's enough. Cabot, you settle down. Now, what about it? Did they admit it? Yeah, said they did it to get in with me for the fight. We didn't hurt her, just scared her a little bit, that's all. Is that right? What difference does it make? We're going to beat it anyway. You are, huh? Sure, all we got to do is come up with the right plea. You'll never make it stick. You got it all figured, haven't you? Sure, there are a lot of ways we can go. Yeah, we got one in mind. <laughs> On December 14th, trial was held in Department 98, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspects were tried and convicted of kidnapping one count and received sentence as prescribed by law. Kidnapping is punishable by imprisonment for a term of from one to 25 years.